Local author Jacqueline Lynch writes on the history of our region. Her latest book is Comedy and Tragedy on the Mountain, 70 Years of Summer Theater at Mount Tom. Carolee McGrath sat down with Ms. Lynch to hear about some of the rising stars who got their start on the mountain in Holyoke. Well, it's um, about the wonderful heritage and history of theater we have in this area, specifically at the old casino playhouse on Mount Tom. And uh, a variety of acting groups worked there. It wasn't just comedy and drama. You had vaudeville, operas, operettas, the old WPA theater in the 30s, an amazing collection, an amazing collaboration of theater on Mount Tom for seven decades. So who started it and when? It began when, pretty much when Mountain Park began. And uh, it began as just another attraction to get, try to get to people to go to the park. But it very soon developed a life of its own. And um, it was uh, under the auspices of different managers that the park hired at first. But then in the 1940s through the 1960s, for the longest tenure, a group called the Valley Players took over and they rented the theater from Mountain Park. And then afterwards there were a couple of other companies and they too rented the theater. So it wasn't really under the auspices of the park at that time. They were just landlords. Okay, so but it started in the late 1800s. It did, uh, 18, 1895. And uh, some very famous people performed there. In the early days, we know that uh, John Drew, the uh, uncle of the uh, famous Barry Moores, right. appeared there. Sarah Bernhardt, some very big names. And uh, then through the 1920s and 30s, we have people like George Brent and Wendell Corey, who later went on to Hollywood careers. In the late 1960s, you had some very famous people from television and the movies. Probably the most famous unknown pe person that many will recall will be, of course, Hal Holbrook. Okay, so tell us a little bit about Hal Holbrook, because I, I was talking to you a little bit off camera. When I saw his picture, I immediately knew who he was. But he, he had started there. That was where he, he was, you know, still a young actor. He did. He and his wife, Ruby, were just beginning their careers, and they, they didn't even have equity cards yet. He was, he was uh, hoping to get a job at Mount Tom, and uh, through connections, finally got one, and that's where they gave him his equity card, the Valley Players. He performed there for a few seasons from 1951, 52, 53. It was a great learning experience for him. And afterwards, he went on to New York and did some stage work and radio work. But he returned to open the 1957 season with a, an experimental play he had come up with on his own, which now we know was Mark Twain Tonight, his famous one-man show. Um, where did the actors stay uh, when they went up? And, and performed? Well, a lot of them stayed with homes right in the area, right in Holyoke. People would rent their rooms to them. And um, in the very early years of the Valley Players, they rented what was the old Steiger summer home mansion up in the Highlands. And they all lived there like, like, a, 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 like a family. There was a, a funny article I read about sharing their ration books during World War II to make ends meet. But a lot of them stayed with families right, right in Holyoke. Why have you, uh, I know you've written other books, um, several books uh, about this area, fiction and nonfiction. What has attracted you to this topic? To theater? Well, I've always been interested in theater, and I've always been interested in local history. So it just seemed like a, a wonderful opportunity to combine the two interests. Jacqueline Lynch, thank you so much for joining us thank today and, and sharing this with us. A pleasure.